The Air TV News Broadcast Crew and I delete higher and already for your daily news briefing at 10.30 local time. First, let us catch up with the major headlines. World Humanitarian Day Observed. Auditor General's Office provides training. Precious super launch volcano erupts after powerful 7.0 earthquake. 6.1 magnitude earthquake shakes. Now look news. World Humanitarian Day was observed today at a national level under the team Humanitarianism is a symbol of dignity, care and resilience featuring various activities. The event was organized at Bar Abraha Bahta School of Blind and Mr. Mehrat Afis Hayed, Director General of Social Warfare at the Ministry of Labor and Social Warfare stated that the objective of the observance was to create conditions in which citizens living with vision and hearing impairments as well as intellectual and developmental challenges can lead normal lives that respect their human dignity and rights. Mr. Mehrat Afis further emphasized the Eritrean society in particularly distinguished by its strong values and commitment to caring for sections of population with special needs, including elderly persons with disabilities and children. He noted that this cherished cultural is practiced through voluntarily mutual support, groups or initiatives by social organization. Ms. Nahla Valji, UN resident, Humanitarian coordinator in the Eritrea highlighted that this year's team called on everyone to act for humanity, demonstrating a responsibility, value and effectiveness of working together in support of most vulnerable. She also urged everyone to leverage their influence to reduce suffering and help communities become self-reliant. The event was marked by cultural and artistic programs by students of Abraha Bahta School of the Blind. World Humanitarian Day has been observed for 15 times internationally and for fourth time at a national level. As part of its program to develop human capacity, the Eritrean General Audit is providing training to 30 of its members at Asmara Palace Hotel. The training conducted in collaboration with African Organization for Supreme Audit Institutions in speaking English speaking countries. Ethics and leadership activities, preparation and evaluation, as well as general human resources development. The general manager of the Eritrean General Audit, Mr. Gabriel Gabriel Gabramadhin, stated that the objective of the standardized training provided to both senior and junior officials is to improve the develop the institution's daily activities. Mr. Gabriel Gabriel also noted that African Organization for Supreme Audit Institutions in English-speaking countries, AFROSAI, conducted monitoring and evaluation of the training programs, and according to their evaluation, the office maintained a true image of Eritrea. Commandable soil and water conservation activities has been conducted in the ordered subzone through strong participation of the public, members of the Defense Forces, youth workers and students from the summer work program. This was reported by Mr. Cassetta Gabriel Hannes, head of the economic development in the subzone. Mr. Cassetta also mentioned that the program include rehabilitation of water diversion schemes, grazing lands and construction of terraces and water diversion schemes and tree planting and tree seedlings. He further called on the public to preserve the already renovated and newly constructed terraces and water diversion schemes as well as the planted three seedlings to ensure their sustainability. The viewers will be back with the international news shortly. Do stay tuned. Welcome back. One of Russia's most active volcanoes has erupted spearing plums of ash five kilometers into the sky over far eastern
Kamchatka Peninsula and briefly triggering a code red warning for aircraft. The Sivalanch volcano began structuring shortly after a powerful 7.0 magnitude earthquake struck off Kamchatka's east coast early on Sunday, according to vo volcanologists from Russia Academy of Science. They warned that another even more potent earthquake could be on the way. The Academy Institute of Volcanology and Seismology released a video showing the ash could cloud rather over civil lunch. It stretched more than 490 kilometers east and southeast of the volcano. The Ibeko volcano located on the Kuril Islands also spread ash 2.5 kilometers high, the institute said. It did not explicitly said whether the earthquake set off the eruptions. On our last news, a 6.1 magnitude earthquake struck off Taiwan's east coast Friday morning, the United States Geological Survey said with the island government confirming there is no report of major damage. The tremor, which could be left in the capital Taipei, hit at 7.35 a.m. at a depth of 15 kilometers near the Haolin, epicenter of the major earthquake in April, according to the USGS. The Haolin, two people trapped in an elevator during the earthquake were rescued, according to the local fire bureau. The National Fire Agency said there was no major major damage that the island's high-speed train and rail of the metro system were all operating normally. Still, the government urged vigilance in the wake of 5.4 magnitude quake that triggered an alert on Thursday. Dear viewers, we've come to the end of tonight's news. Let's have a quick recap of the headlines. World Humanitarian Day Observed Auditor General's Office provides training to its staff members. Russia civil launch volcano erupts after powerful 7.0 earthquake. 6.1 magnitude earthquake shakes Taiwan. That wraps up our stories for tonight. Thanks for watching and have a good night.